Ich kenne Trailer Nein, die halt Space Kids und Space Kids Rogue und ah. Rocket League. Videos laden sich wunderbar und das ist halt das. Hello everybody, thanks for having me. I'm Alexander Knetik, I'm uh, the director of Arte Creative, which is the young cultural platform of uh, the um, European cultural broadcaster Arte, which is based uh, in, in Strasbourg, close to here. And I, uh, Katharina asked me to talk to you today about one specific thing we are uh, developing at this uh, very old, very, uh, political uh, broadcaster, uh, which is uh, independent video games. So just to start a little bit to explain who we are concretely, we are one organization operating throughout Europe, but based in two countries, one central coordination unit in uh, Arte Gaia in, in Strasbourg, with editorial departments that have changed a lot during the last years, because uh, we started to uh, think of them not as producers for TV, but basically as producers, as producers uh, uh, for uh, digital platforms, and we believe that TV is one digital platform among others. Uh, so all those editorial departments produce content, uh, videos and interactive stuff, uh, directly for all the digital assets of art and integrated media. Um, after the central coordination unit, we have two very different cultures. We have a French, centralistic, Paris-driven culture. So we have one art in France, in Paris, obviously, uh, where all the projects, digital and TV, come from. And then in Germany, you have one, yeah, well, you have 10 different federally structured production units, uh, which makes it sometimes a little difficult also for content creators to understand how this thing works. But in general, it works. What do we produce? So we produce, obviously we're still a TV station, a broadcast program, so documentary, fiction, cinema, science documentaries, etc. But we also have a digital native production where we produce documentaries, magazines, and series directly for our digital assets. Uh, this because uh, we think of our audiences not as a big TV audience and a little DVD bonuses on the web, uh, but uh, we uh, think of them as citizens and citizens with different kinds of ages. Our TV target today is 61 years old in Germany and 63 years old in France. This is the average, which means that in Germany with 61 years, we are the second youngest public broadcaster after the ZDF, <laughs> which means we have a big problem. Uh, this is why we produce digital uh, um, uh, programs, uh, because we know that there are some themes <coughs> and some rhythms in the videos we cannot use on TV. If uh, we just use a House of Cards style kind of cut, we just scare the <coughs> out of our TV people. So we have to do it on other platforms which are digital. And this is also why we produce more and more uh, for all new media types. Of course, for the last 10 years, uh, traditional TV and traditional newspapers were making the big difference between traditional business and digital business. Today, you have so many digital media types that uh, you, you have to distinguish them. You have our websites where our average age is 46 and on creative 34, which is already a little younger. And then you have all social media that are media, I think it's as intelligent to put a TV piece on Facebook as it would be to adapt a novel of Dostoevsky and in order to adapt it for TV, just open a book and film yourself while you are just reading the book. We have really to adapt all this stuff for those new media. We're present on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. We are trying to do first things because obvi obviously Snapchat audience is like the third generation after our TV uh, uh, audience. So it's pretty difficult, VR, and also directly stores for video games. Why are we doing it? Because Arte was created 24 years ago in order to foster, uh, I 
quote, European and international audiovisual programs and experiments in all possible forms. So we tried cinema, we tried documentary, we tried TV shows. And there is one form of audiovisual program that has been existing for the last 40 years, which are video games, but we just didn't mention it for the moment. This has to change now, this already has changed for the last two years. We made possi possible authors' documentaries, art house cinema, so why not also support independent video games? Because if we don't support video games, if we don't produce for Facebook, if we don't produce one day for Snapchat, we won't last long. This is what we believe. But obviously, this is a strategy that today in 2016 is like consolidated, but at the beginning, uh, we were scared, as everybody is in the, in the media business. And this is why we needed creators in order to show us that it's really important to try things. Uh, we started basically in late 2013, I was still living in Paris at that time, and uh, we had one young uh, game designer who, uh, whose name is Cosmographic, who uh, basically uh, dreamt for his whole life to become a printer, so like Gutenberg, just to print books. When he eventually started to study this, he saw that he never will get a job. And this is why he changed uh, to uh, game design. And he started the Gobelin School, uh, which is an obvious choice. I mean, uh, he started the Gobelin School in Paris, and he once presented us an interactive project. It was called Typewriter, which is based on you, you play like, uh, the, like two dots who are in search for the third dot of a sentence. And each level is one uh, a famous font. So you start with Gothic, then you have Garamond for the Renaissance, uh, you have Didot for the Baroque, uh, you then have Clarendon times New Roman, and obviously there's a bonus level, which is Comic Sans, uh, where you have a big lolcat trying to chase you on, uh, uh <coughs> uh, with troll faces. I will just show you the teaser. Uh, we launched it now more than two years ago. Uh, just in order to show you the, the visuals. the first launch of uh, a video game we just tried and we thought yeah it will have a uh, little success of course everybody it's art I mean everybody will say yeah I've seen it of course nobody will, will have seen it uh, but uh, which was really surprising uh, just to show you the visuals the, the whole rest is in French but um, we're really just totally surprised about how it just took off uh, we published it on uh, in October 2013, and 14 minutes after that, we already had an, an, an illegal version on the Pirate Bay, obviously. And this is where we thought this could really be a huge success. It doesn't happen a lot with our documentaries <laughs> or our, our fiction series that it is on Pirate Bay in 14 minutes. Uh, we got the first review in 24 minutes on the New Zealand side. Um, we uh, got a huge uh, lot of articles, uh, for example, a fast company in the US who on the first day it was launched already called it Final Fantasy. Uh, but it generated a lot of, uh, of social shares and this is why on the first day we launched, uh, we became App of the Week in, uh, in France. This is what we thought. Uh, we became App of the Week, uh, so we got a tweet from the App Store, which was just great. 
but we couldn't understand why it went so well because on the next day uh, we uh, became the most downloaded paying app uh, in the French app store more successful than Angry Birds at that time uh, so we, we, we couldn't really understand it. It was the same thing on, uh, on the App Store for iOS, uh, for, for iPad and for the iPhone. And we just understood it two days later. We were eventually App of the Week in 124 countries in the world. Uh, so there were Arte communities forming in Jakarta, in Sao Paulo, throughout the world who never have heard of Arte be before this video game and who were asking uh, things like, public TV service? Uh, we got fabulous mails from the US. Uh, what is public TV service? You, you, you mean it's like state TV, like North Korea? Yeah, it's, it's not, not, not quite the same thing, <laughs> but it's close to it. Um, uh, it it w was so success successful that after 72 hours in France, the logo of games in the App Store was the typewriter logo for two weeks. And uh, it went successful throughout the world. We got uh, tweets in France, in, uh, in, in, in Germany. We got even tweets from Le Vin de Bordeaux. I never understood why, but I, I felt really honored. Uh, from the Netherlands, uh, Italy, uh, obviously Spain, uh, Turkey, uh, people working at the App Store, fonts.com, the official website for all fonts in the world. Adobe InDesign, uh, InDesign Magazine, which is a huge magazine in Australia. Comunicador, which is uh, one of the biggest communication magazines in Brazil, Russia, Japan. This was the App Store in Canada. So uh, it, w it was pretty amazing what happened. And in the end, Typewriter generated 650,000 downloads, uh, which is for the App Store really huge. It was a very different time where really the App Store and iOS were a totally dominant platform, especially for paid downloads, which has changed a lot during the last two and a half years, but it was such a big success that we were thinking how we could bring games more and more into our, uh, to our programs. This is why we tried, for example, uh, documentary games, serious games like Fort McMoney. I wanted to show you very quickly. <laughs> Let's go to McMurray, <laughs> the big boom. was two years ago before uh, Leonardo DiCaprio took the bucket challenge uh, with, uh, wi with the people there, <coughs> the ice bucket challenge with the people there, so it was not so famous at the moment. The idea here was, so you have Fort McMurray, uh, Canada, which at that time before uh, oil prices went down uh, was one of the we wealthiest cities in the world. Uh, it's uh, also, it has been the biggest city, uh, uh, the, the, the northmost biggest city in the world. Uh, 20 years ago, there were 5,000 people living. Uh, now there are 100,000 people living. The average income per family is $220,000, and people only live from the old business. And this town grew basically up like SimCity. This is why we invited the whole world to play SimCity with Fort McMoney, which is like the nickname of Fort McMurray because people come here to get rich. Uh, and it went pretty successful, especially in Germany and in Canada, thanks to our media partnerships. But very quickly we saw that uh, our way was not to gamify a documentary. The idea was really to produce games, especially for a cultural platform like Arte Creative. It was really important just to produce those indie games. And this is why from 2016 on, we, we are launching now four full-scale independent video games. Obviously, as we don't go for Avatar on TV, we won't go for Assassin's Creed on, uh, on, on video games. It's really independent video games. Uh, we started uh, with Californium, uh, which was launched in February. You it's an exploration game uh, where you play Elvin Green, a second-class writer who's trapped uh, in a very psychedelic version of Berkeley 1967. It's an homage to Philip K. Dick, the famous science fiction author. 
um, and uh, it came along, basically there was first this video game and then we thought what about making a documentary for TV? So it's not the game which just follows up the documentary, it's the documentary who comes complementary to the game and it was uh, within a s uh, strong, uh, it was a strong element within a larger programming coming also with a, our first VR fiction that is called I Fill. You can check all out uh, at uh, arte.tv or creative.arte.tv where you have the whole programming. So the 360 documentary, uh, the 360 fiction, the uh, the video game, and uh, and also uh, the documentary. What will now? What will we launch now? Uh, we will have uh, during summer sense that will be our first VR video game. It is adapted from a comic book uh, from Marc Antoine Mathieu in in France. Uh, the visuals are very simple, black and white. Uh, you are trapped. It's a very journey-like experience, like the, the 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 indie game from PlayStation, where you are trapped in a big desert of white color. You have to find your path and uh, to, to 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 win your path thanks to some some puzzles, uh, with some arrows that indicate you the way. And the humble goal of this experience is just to understand the meaning of life. So, we we could try it. It will be available uh, on Steam. Uh, and uh, directly also for first uh, VR devices like the Samsung Gear VR. <coughs> mm. Two months later in November, we'll launch Super Polyphilo, which is really a working title. We'll try to get something a little bit more accessible, let's say. <coughs> the idea here is uh, a prince who has to wander through dozens of marvelous worlds. He has to fight against gods and dragons to free the princess he loves. It really sounds like Zelda, but it's actually the pitch of the Hyperotomachia Polyphili, which is a Renaissance book from the 15th century, uh, where you have this direct plot, and which was, which just uh, created some big gardens in Italy, for example, like the Garden of Bomarzo, and which we will try to uh, tr translate into a platform game that will be uh, directly available for Steam, uh, for iOS and Android, and it will be also the first game we are co-producing with uh, the PlayStation Network for PlayStation 4 and the Xbox. So it's directly meant to be port ported there. And then the last one that will come this year, The Vandals, uh, it's uh, the new game from the makers of Typewriter. So still the typographer who became game designer. It's an infiltration strategy game. We call it a commando-like game. So it's really based on the big infiltration games of the 90s. Uh, and it has six levels where you have to become basically the new Banksy. Uh, it's about the history of street art. Uh, it starts and it's really an infiltration game. You have to infiltrate into some suburbs in Sao Paulo or in New York City. And it ends like a transport tycoon thing where you have uh, basically to be the administrator of all the, wel of all the wealth uh, you accumulated, uh, selling your works to galleries in, uh, in, in, in Chelsea and Singapore after you sold your soul uh, through uh, big commerce. So this will come at the end of uh, the year 2016. Maybe just very quick before we take some questions uh, from the German pa part, how could you co collaborate with us? Uh, there are two ways, or whether you contact me myself, uh, or we just launched, I've seen uh, Thierry in the, uh, um, in the audience, a new program which is called Spielfabrik. Uh, it's a cooperation between Arte and, for the beginning, two of the biggest game uh, design schools in France and Germany, which are the uh, Engmin uh, in, uh, in Angoulême and the Cologne Game Lab. We want to extend it to other uh, schools. Uh, the idea is to give young students, uh, to give students and young creators, so it's not only for students, the opportunity to develop their ideas with concrete funding, uh, and obviously also to to, to develop the co-production between uh, France and Germany in this uh, in this sector uh, that that is very differently financed in both of the countries. And for art, it will be super important to have both countries being uh, within the game uh, during the next two, three years. And the idea is to create the first games for summer fall 2017, so there's still some time. If you won't go for this program, you just can send me an email or a direct message or whatever you want. Thank you very much, and let's take some questions. Thank you very much, Alexander. Are there questions? 
I have just a small comment. I should say that typewriter was made both by Endymion and Gobla. It's, uh, the, the students were in a, a common degree of Endymion and Gobla. It's important for us. Absolutely. They were. Um, I've got a question about the virtual reality part. Um, I think it's super interesting that you are launching into that area. Um, do you decide it on specific glasses you're going to create content for and other glasses not? For example, the HTC Vive, as it's in a really interactive glass, but uh, nearly nobody has it. Um, do you have, did you make like a decision how you want to profile art in the next, this year, next year? Absolutely, it's a tricky question because uh, even uh, the Samsung Gear VR, uh, if you compare it to the reach of TV or even social media, nobody has it. Uh, it came now with uh, with the Galaxy S7, but uh, there will be, uh, I think the, the uh, prognostics are 7 million by the end of the year, which is huge, but nothing compared to world's population or people being on the internet. So for the moment, uh, the first projects we launched were uh, 360 video and VR video. So we really concentrated more on casual VR. So we concentrated really on uh, uh, on Google uh, on the Google Cardboard, which was co-developed actually by one of the project managers of Typewriter, uh, and uh, on the Samsung Gear VR because it was the first real commercial device that was launched. Uh, our projects are also available on the Oculus. Uh, but clearly the Oculus team via Facebook wants to go for social VR and game VR, at least it how it appears to us. <coughs> so we are not sure that we'll be pursue on this part. The HTC Vive is for me for the moment the most exciting device, but it's really not for casual VR, it's really for heavy VR. So we are thinking uh, maybe to bring Sense on, uh, so as it's a video game on the HTC Vive, but we are not sure for the moment, we'll decide during the next three weeks. And then obviously there will be also the Sony device that will come uh, just before Christmas, <laughs> a surprise. Uh, and that will be explored for all the games that we'll be producing uh, for a PS4 that will be for the moment Super Polyphilo and Vandals. So if a Super Polyphilo is a platformer, it won't really go well, but an infiltration strategy game could go pretty well also for the for Sony VR. Another question. All right. So thank you very much, Alexander.